Hey everybody, Stephen Roselle here, Senior Maya Specialist at Autodesk, and I'm going to cover part five in the Time Editor demo series. And in this presentation, we're going to cover how to use different animations for a given character and how to blend those together uh, kind of seamlessly and kind of make them work together, even though maybe they didn't originally start out uh, the same. So what we're going to do is take a couple of clips of animation. You can see my character here is in the time, uh, rather in the T-pose, and I'm going to scrub through the timeline. And what you'll see is by default, as I scrub through the timeline here, I'm getting some kind of crazy results. So what's actually happening is I'm getting a composite of two different animations that don't go together. Uh, and so I can actually see these separately. You can see I have the uh, green or kind of uh, the aqua clip here, and I have got the purple clip here. I'm going to go in and I'm just going to solo these. And now you can see that the first motion is just kind of a walk from kind of front to back. This is actually the, the, the Z facing. Uh, and if I switch over to the other clip, now you can see that he's kind of facing us and then he's got this kind of dance motion and then he goes through this little routine and kind of pumps his fist and then walks off. So what I want to do is take parts of each of these clips and combine them together. And for this clip, I don't care about any of that in the beginning. I actually want to start right about here where he's going to do his fist bump. And I'm going to trim that off. Now, I can trim the beginning of a clip, or I can trim the end of a clip, or I can just split the clip in two, and then I can use either or, or I can just delete the piece. So one thing to point out about trimming is that all that does is it masks the underlying keys. I can always use the trim tool, which is the first tool here, and I can just drag that out, and then it will expose all of the original keys. So anytime you're trimming or cutting up your clips, all you're doing is you're hiding the parts that you don't want. They're still there if you ever need to get back to them. Now there's a way to actually bake that in, which we'll talk about later. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is put this clip here and then we'll take the other clip and we'll actually just kind of move that out of the way. And actually I'm gonna turn off my, my soloing and my muting. Uh, and we'll just kind of, just kind of uh, piggyback one on top of the other. So I've got this clip here. And then I've got this clip here, and you can see they start out in very different places. So I just want to go in and kind of, first of all, figure out how I want to blend these. So basically what I want to do is have him move from this motion and then just kind of walk off to the side. You can see right now he kind of turns and he kind of comes back. I just want to have him keep walking. So what I'm going to do is let him take a couple of steps, maybe one, two steps. And now I just want to figure out where the best point to blend is. Now, I probably want to do it relative to the plant foot when I'm doing the blending. So I might want to go in and have it, you know, blend like right as he's planting his heel, or I might want to have him blend more in the middle of the stride. And I'm actually going to choose kind of the middle of the stride where his foot is planted on the ground. And then I'm just going to go in and just trim off the end of that clip. Now, a uh, couple of other options. When I do the trimming, uh, you'll notice that when I, when I trim off the end, it actually leaves a gap. There's a ripple tool uh, that I can add. Uh, if I use the ripple tool and I trim, that will actually delete that empty space and it will pull the next clip so that the next clip actually bumps right up against that. Um, it doesn't really matter in this case. I'm not going to worry too much about it. But let's go in now and figure out on this clip where he's kind of walking away from us, I want to go in and figure out an appropriate blend point. So you can see here he takes a step with his left foot, right foot, left foot, and right foot. I, I clipped the last one or trimmed the last one where the right foot was planted on the ground. So I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to find roughly in here where the right foot is planted on the ground. And then I'm just going to basically go in and split that up. And you can use the W key as a hot key. I'll just delete that. And then I'll just piggyback this clip right on top of the other. So what you'll see now is that one clip is going to end and the next clip is going to begin right after that. And Right now, they don't really jive. They don't really sync up because one is going one direction, the other is going the other direction. So I could technically just kind of pull in here and I could overlap these and that will just automatically create a blend. And now you'll see that it transitions from one clip to another. The upper body actually looks pretty good, but clearly he's skating here across the ground, which is not what we want. So we have a couple of ways of dealing with this. We have the ability to pick up one clip and move it around uh, using what's called a relocator. Uh, we can also do that in a more automated manner. And so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to get started with something a little more automated. So what I want to do is take the second clip and match it to the first clip. And I want to do that relative to a specific object. And I've chosen the, the plant foot, the right foot, as the kind of reference point. Now, if this guy was hanging from a, a ledge or if he was swinging from some bars, I might choose to do it relative to the hand uh, if that was planted 
on, say, for instance, a bar or something, but that's not the case. I'm using the feet as kind of the, the main uh, point of reference. So what I'm going to do is go to the last frame of the first clip, uh, or sorry, the first frame of the second clip, rather. I'm going to select that clip, and then I'm going to select the foot that I want to use as a reference, and then I'll go into the match tool, which is right here, match poses. Uh, you have to make sure you select the clip, match poses. And now what you can see is it auto fills the foot as the matching object. Now I could take any object, any arbitrary node, and I could remap that. Uh, but because I had the foot selected, that's the one it chose. So that's the one I want, the right foot. Now the root can be any number of joints. So basically the root is going to be a node that just continues to move forward and doesn't necessarily loop. Um, so depending on how your rig is built, you may have one master root, which is the, the base node that moves everything. Or with some rigs and things like HIK, you'll have multiple roots where, for instance, the hands and the feet and the hips all move forward. And it detects that. So it automatically sees, okay, I've got the pelvis, the hands, the feet. I want to use all of those as root objects. Now, I could explicitly override that, and I could say I really just want the global root to be the, the, the main driver. But I actually, in this case, want to use all because all of these are, are moving forward uh, in kind of an absolute space. So now I want to go in and choose the previous clip. And then when I match, I can do uh, at, at either the beginning or end of a clip, I want to use the current frame right now. And then I also want to do a full match. So I want to do the default, which is the full translation and also the full rotation. Uh, so it will basically pick him up, rotate him, and move him around. So once again, I'll select that. I'll choose previous clip, match, apply, and it will pick up the current clip, move it, and it, under the hood, it will apply what's called a relocator node, which we'll talk about later. And now you can see that the last frame does indeed line up pretty well with the first frame. So the last frame of the first clip and the first frame of the last clip are very close. So now I can actually go in and start to blend these together. So I can take this clip, I can overlap that by maybe four or five frames, something like that. And now as I kind of go through my timeline, you can see that that actually does indeed create a pretty good transition. So one thing to point out is that sometimes you might want to add a little bit of a buffer. So there's a few things that we can do here is I can just pull that out a little bit. And then you could use my trim tool. And if I decide I need a, an extra frame or two, I can come in here and I can just take that and I can pull that out, add another frame. And I can come in here and I can take that and pull that out and add another frame. Whoops, there we go. And now I've basically just kind of given myself a buffer on either end in order to do that transition. So now I might want to go in and add a little bit longer transition now that I've added a couple of extra frames. And that can help with the timing. It can help with just the general blending uh, result that you get. So a couple of other things I want to point out here. Let's actually close that. The timing is uh, always important. So depending on how these clips were created, they may or may not be uh, in sync in terms of the timing. So if you actually take a look at this, we'll just press play and we'll watch it. You'll see that first one blends into the second, and then he kind of accelerates there. So the blend itself accelerates. Uh, but also, the second clip is actually faster than the first clip. So that's part of the problem. So there's a few different things that we can do in here. Uh, right now, the blend itself is a linear blend. So as I overlap these, it's going to linearly transition from one clip to the other. You can actually edit this through a curve. So I can right click, and I can go in, and I can say that I want to crossfade. And you'll see by default it says linear. I, I could say I want to use a custom curve. So I can go in and say edit custom curve. Actually, you have to create it first. So I actually have to go in here uh, and create the crossfade as a custom. Uh, and then I can just quickly go in and edit that. So I'll say edit custom curve. And there's the curve. By default, it's going to be linear. If I wanted to accelerate or decelerate that transition, I could go in and I could do something like an ease in, ease out, or I could do a fast out, slow in. And I could actually change the kind of the rate of the transition uh, to kind of work best with the situation. So that's one way of working with it. And again, that's just going to change the rate of the transition. It's not actually going to affect the, the timing necessarily uh, of either clip, only, only the timing of that little part in between the clips. So it would only affect the timing of whatever gap we have here, whether that's five frames or 10 frames. Now, another thing that we can do is do retiming of the clips themselves. So if I were to go in and play this back and see that the, you know that first animation is a little slower than the second, 
I can retime either of these independently. So all I have to do is basically go in here and grab that second clip. And relative to the first frame, I'm going to go into the scale tool and I'll just click drag and I'll just scale that out. And in order to actually see this, I can go into the attribute editor and I have a scale value so you can see it right here. So I just scaled it interactively to 1.27. If I do 1.5, that's going to be basically 150%. So it's going to slow that down um, by 50% basically. So now when I play that back, the transition actually makes a little bit more sense. Now I can start to come in here and you know tweak the amount of overlap, tweak the amount of transition. So let's just play with that a little bit. Uh, I'll just run this through one more time and we'll just kind of see the results. So that starts to look a little bit better. So I gave myself a few more frames for transition and I scaled out the second clip to make it a little bit faster so that it syncs up better with the first clip. Now we could take this one step further uh, if I wanted to get a really uh, specific control over the timing of the clip at a certain point. So let's actually go back and set the clip scale to be one and that just sets it back to kind of its default state. And instead of doing a universal scale, uh, which will basically you know, uniformly scale across the entire clip, what I want to do is create a time warp. So I'll right click and I'll go into the retiming option. And in here, I have two different types of time editing tools. I can do, use a speed curve or a time warp curve, and they both create the same effect. It's just they're different methods. Some people prefer to work with the speed curve where you can accelerate and decelerate uh, by basically amplifying the curve. Uh, I actually kind of like the time warp just because I'm used to it, but it's basically a, a mechanism for changing the rate of the animation over time. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a time warp. And what that will do is it will create a linear curve similar to the transition curve that I talked about before. Um, this is something that's a little bit uh, tricky and a little bit important and very important actually when, when you're working with these is to figure out kind of the relative time. So what you can see is when I go to the graph editor, I've actually got two representations. I've got the default representation of the time warp and then I've got an, a kind of a modified representation of the time warp that inherits any offset for the clip itself. So in other words, if I were to take this clip and move it way off in time, starting at frame 200, and I go to the graph editor, you can see that that offset now actually happens to the entire clip. Now this is technically starting at 140, and that's because remember I trimmed off the original part of the curve, the original part of this clip. So actually, if I were to go in and untrim that, you could see that there's actually uh, some additional motion here uh, that has been offset and it's just kind of hidden. So let me actually go back a step and I'll show you how to make this work. So just be conscious of which curve you're working with. What you want to do is select the clip after you've applied the time warp, go to the graph editor. Don't select the base time warp. You need to select the retimed time warp or the offset time warp if there has been offset. And now what I want to do is figure out where I want that time warp to start because the time warp encompasses the entire animation. So if I've trimmed part of my clip, that means it's encompassing even the trimmed part. So the way you work around this is to go to the time editor and figure out when your timing starts for that particular clip. So what you can see here is actually I'm a little off. Let's actually take this just so it starts at a specific frame. We'll do it at 68. So we'll say at frame 68 is when my transition starts. So that's where I want to begin the time warp. So I just use that as kind of a reference point. I go back to the graph editor and there my time, uh, my frame is on 68. So I'll select the curve, right click and insert a key. And this will be the beginning of my time warp. So I'll give myself a little bit more room here. So anything before that is pretty much irrelevant uh, because it's not actually being used, it's being masked out. So I can actually take this and I can either just grab the handle and start to edit it as it is. If you want to actually separate it out from the first part of the animation, you can just right click on the handle and say break tangent and that will give you independent control over that particular uh, tangent, the out tangent as opposed to the end tangent. So now what I'm doing is I'm slowing the animation down here and then it's going to speed up and get closer to the original rate as it gets farther away from that start point. So if I wanted to exaggerate this, let's actually do something like this. And you can actually see that's a pretty uh, steep change in the curve. So let's go back to the time editor. 
and we'll take a look uh, at how this plays back. And what you'll see is the beginning of that clip is going to be super slow, and then he's going to speed up and speed up and speed up. And then by the end of the clip, he's going to be walking really fast, which is not really what I want. That's an exaggerated version of what I want. But what I can do is kind of go to the graph editor and start to kind of play with these keys. And let's just say maybe I want to make that linear. And then maybe I want to take this one and just kind of slow it down just a little bit. So instead of flattening it out right there, I'm just going to slow it down a little bit, add a little bit of kind of an arcing motion. So it's slower here, faster there. And this is really a bit of a give and take. So I can actually just kind of come back in here and, and I can play this and just see what it looks like. So now he's slow and he's going to start accelerating from that point on. So I might have slowed it down a little bit too much. So I'll just come in here and go to the graph editor and I'll start to tweak my timing here a little bit more, maybe slow it down a little bit less. So now it's slowing down, but just not slowing down as much. So I'll play this back and there I've got pretty good timing. So now the transition uh, between the first walk and the second walk actually looks visually a lot more similar. And that's going to make that timing of that that transition work a lot better than it did just by default when the two clips originally were at very different rates. So hopefully that makes sense uh, and kind of gives you an idea of the kinds of different uh, retiming that you can do and how that works in conjunction with clip blending. All right, thanks for your time.